a little video from my Lamborghini that's driving again. Ain't that amazing? So the crypto markets um, are doing very well. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, again hovering around four thousand dollars, three thousand nine hundred fifty, and um, the alts um, are also not at all-time highs, but. Um, not too far from the all-time highs either. There is no crash in Bitcoin values and usually altcoin values will crash versus Bitcoin also when the bear market is there. I don't really see that yet. Um, but of course it can come. Uh, but um, I think that um, I was um, wrong in, uh, in selling um, such a big position of my crypto uh, simply because of the video, the chart I showed you um, and another chart I just discovered um, about the valuations um, historical valuations during bubbles uh, where I said that it's, it's only 70% overvalued, but it can go to 500% overvaluation uh, compared to its uh, moving average and extrapolated past growth curve. Uh, but, uh, but there's another uh, interesting um, chart I've seen. Uh, I will share it in the link uh, in the description. Uh, but uh, it compares the value of Bitcoin uh, to its uh, transaction value, the amount of US dollar value that's being transacted transact on the blockchain and then that compared to its price, its valuation. And in that chart you see that, it's an interesting chart because you see that in past bubbles indeed it went, like the price went too high compared to its um, transaction value. But we're not there yet uh, today. Not we're not there yet compared to past bubbles. We are actually not in bubble territory yet. Even though Bitcoin just went up the past two years from two hundred dollars to now four thousand uh, dollars, we're not there yet. And and I think if I look at other indicators like, for example, Google Trends, the search, uh, how many people search for Bitcoin online. Um, there you can also see that, 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 that there is a new all-time high now in, 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 in Google searches for Bitcoin, but it's only three times higher than the past bubble, and in past bubbles it also always went ten times higher, so there is some room for expansion there too. But if you look at the search term cryptocurrency, you see that, that is already ten times higher than past bubbles. So, so, and, and, and also looking at, um, at, 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 at valuations of, 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 of cryptocurrencies, many have gone up a lot, but not Bitcoin. Uh, so everything in the top 10 has indeed gone up tremendously, except for Bitcoin. Um, I, I mean, not everything, probably Bitcoin, um, and, and, and of course Bitcoin Cash is actually, that's a special case I think, but Bitcoin, Litecoin, um, they haven't gone up as much at all as Ethereum, IOTA, NAM, all the newcomers of the past two or three years, they have gone up a lot more than the old timers. And old timers is Bitcoin, Litecoin, but you have also Peercoin, Dogecoin, I mean, of course, Peercoin, Dogecoin, these are dead projects. It's not, I do not recommend to invest in that. Uh, even though price-wise, actually, Dogecoin is interesting. But, uh, you know, a, a coin needs to be built. Uh, last I heard, uh, the developer uh, has left and nothing of um, serious has replaced him. So, I mean, of course, I don't think it's a good idea to invest in that. But Bitcoin is not a dead project. 
and actually Bitcoin you should, you should see as a combination of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and there you, you basically if you invest in Bitcoin and you invest an equal amount of value in Bitcoin Cash and not in coins, say if you buy 10 Bitcoin you only buy 10 Bitcoin Cash I don't think that's a good move but let's say you invest $10,000 in Bitcoin well invest 5,000 in Bitcoin and 5,000 in Bitcoin Cash and there you're basically investing in Bitcoin but you're investing in two branches of Bitcoin and and then I think this may be a much better investment over the next few months than the other top coins such as uh, Ethereum, NAM, IOTA actually I really like I have said this already two, two times, I'm going to repeat it again. I recommend strongly to sell almost everything, like to not invest in IOTA at, 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 at NAM. Um, and, 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 and if you have invested, to turn that back and, uh, and sell it. Uh, unless, of course, you have invested in these coins when they were small and you are sitting in massive gains and you have sold already. A, a big piece of your position okay that's another story but um, but if you have bought in at valuations of 1 billion plus for these coins that was the wrong move you should turn it around even if you're sitting on a loss this is my opinion um, why because I think these coins NAM and IOTA are very interesting uh, because I don't understand the valuation with NAM I already had that uh, six months ago or like how is it possible it's valued so high but you you will hear so little from this project like it's not like you have I don't know they, I hear something they are doing something in Japan and the only thing I know about it I have not looked up it for information that's true but you also don't hear anything about them if you're just in the crypto world so but why is this valued billions? And I think the explanation is that, well, very, very, very few people have these coins. It's the same for IOTA. I mean, very, very few people have entered these coins when they were starting out. And the price has continued to go up in one straight line. And what does that, what, what's the result of that? Well, the result of that is that still today, very few people hold these coins, I think. Sure, because the price has gone up a lot, you have some people that have bought into that, but small quantities because it was very expensive. And so I think that Basically, these coins are owned for the most part by the initial ICO investors still today. And maybe they have sold 20-30% of the coins, but still 70% of the coins are, are held by the ICO investors or the ICO participators because NAM was distributed for free. But you needed to have per account, you could only get so much and probably some people have created a lot of accounts. Actually, the founder had done that and he was caught on that and then he took a step back but probably some other people or the same people have done that and so a few people have probably a lot of those coins the same with IOTA because the ICO was basically a very low profile only thousand Bitcoin was raised almost no publicity and so only a few people have invested ICO and since then it has gone up like every fucking week or every fucking month it has gone up a lot eh? and so and so and so so these people like sure they have sold some on the way up but maybe 20% or 30% because that was way enough to have huge profits yeah? so they didn't need to sell anything more and of course when you make a lot of profits with a project you don't want to sell because you feel like every time you sell you make you lose a lot of opportunity the next time you check your account you say why the fuck did I sell that because if I wouldn't have I would have had a lot of more money today so so that's why I think these projects are valued so high because basically the founders or the initial ICO investors are holding. They are not selling 
and so there is very little sail pressure and there is a little bit of buy pressure because the price has gone up a lot actually since the beginning there has been a little bit of buy pressure that has caused the price to go up but actually not a little bit quite a lot of buy pressure because the price has gone up a lot so you can only have that with strong buy pressure and so that was that has happened basically you have had in the past strong buy pressure and very low sell pressure but the risk right now is that still very few people hold these coins that means that only a few need to change their mind and start selling a few of the initial ICO investors okay if they change their mind and they start selling the price gonna dump a lot because they hold a lot a few people hold a lot and I think that's a serious risk for NAM and IOTA Ethereum of course not this thing has gone up a lot also but the initial ICO had massive exposure had a lot of investors eh? and so the turnover has been a lot more eh? uh, this is not the, the price is not carried by a few people the price is carried by a lot of people so but still then I think Ethereum is also not a good time to invest even though it's a great project and even though I've been wrong about this project and and and, and I mean I, I, I changed my mind about Ethereum in the beginning I said the same about Ethereum as I'm saying today of IOTA um, which is they are building castles in the sky dreams uh, but uh, nothing really concrete and very high risk uh, yes that's true but uh, at the same time Ethereum offered something that really spoke to, you, to the imagination of a lot of cryptocurrency developers and has succeeded in attracting a lot of projects that built on top of Ethereum. This is really an amazing achievement and that's because they have developed tools that allow people to create things on, the, on their decentralized network. I think this might be really a big success, continue to be a big success Ethereum. But still, this has gone up a lot in value, has only gotten positive news so I do want to wait for a bear market, a real bear market, not sideways movements like we've seen up until today, but a real bear market. And this can take another year. We could have another bubble in crypto and Ethereum could go from, from, from the 30 billion or, or, or what is it today? Uh, yeah, tens of billions could go to hundreds of billions. That's true. Before you have a real bear market. That's true. But it will come a real bear market. But of course, it can take a long time. But if it comes, then I think a project like Ethereum is interesting. And also, NAM and IOTA should then be researched. Because, uh, but, but first, uh, they need to be shaken out. Because, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the difference with IOTA and NAM is that, compared to Ethereum, is that um, these are very fragile projects they are not established yet they are valued in the billions eh? so 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 that's that's the high risk here and eh? they can they can also go away much more quicker than a project like ethereum um, so uh, I also want to say something about uh, one of the latest videos of uh, dope forever I love her videos great technical analysis but she made a video about um, that the price is uh, that that, that um, she mentioned that 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 value is created out of thin air in the cryptocurrency uh, world and so for example when Bitcoin cash was created there were no real buyers to support that price it was basically for the project and then basically have like six billion dollars that basically is created out of thin air uh, and so this is therefore a very fragile price as well and can can collapse easily because value is created out of thin air i don't think that's correct um, but i do have to say about bitcoin cash that the amount of transactions compared to its value is low 
and that's why I, I also think Bitcoin Cash is actually not that great an investment right now um, and, and uh, best to wait buy a little but wait for if you want to really invest into this project probably maybe we have to wait also for a bear market to see the amount of transactions catch up with the valuation because I think that's a very high risk invest in something where the transactions don't justify the value that's certainly the case with Bitcoin Cash today so um, I mean uh, okay there, so there's that uh, but I think that um, uh, value is not created out of thin air when 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 a project forks like with Bitcoin the value supported always is cre is created is decided by by buyers and sellers who will do transactions at a certain price and if there are transactions at a certain price it means that that's the value in the market and In this case, with Bitcoin, the value is indeed split. Like when Bitcoin Cash is launched, it means that people valued Bitcoin. And then there's suddenly a fork, it's called Bitcoin Cash. Well, the same people, they value Bitcoin Cash. And they value it 10 times lower. But they do value it at 10 times uh, at 10% of the value of Bitcoin on average and, does, and that does mean that that value does come from Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies it comes from all the competition because when you value Bitcoin Cash when a new project is there Bitcoin Cash and you value that at 10% of the value of Bitcoin it does mean that this takes a piece of all the other projects you value huh? and indeed for example before you may have valued Bitcoin or others like Zcash or, or Dash or, or Monero you before Bitcoin Cash was there you may have probably valued them a little bit higher but now that Bitcoin Cash is there you value them a little bit lower because well there's a new story in the market the problem with Bitcoin was that well it became more and more expensive per transaction and this was not the case with some others like Ethereum. It's unbelievable how cheap it is per transaction. Eh? They do an amazing job there. Dash also, eh? very cheap per transaction. So over the past half year, year, some of the value of Bitcoin has gone to Ethereum and and uh, and, and and Dash, for example, um, because it was cheaper transactions. But now suddenly you have Bitcoin Cash, and so some people give that value and it's at the expense of the other uh, crypto so there is no value created out of thin air there is only value shifted in the minds between projects and that expresses it itself in what price people are willing to pay for something and uh, in, uh, in the market cap valuation um, so, uh, voila, I think I rambled long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.